Qatar. What have you heard about it? Many people know Qatar as a sponsor of their favorite football club or as the host of the 2022 Football World Cup. So, what else is there to know? Let's start with a few facts. Qatar is a small peninsula in the Middle East and shares a border with Saudi Arabia. Qatar. It has beautiful beaches and a stunning desert. And thanks to its natural gas, it is one of the richest countries in the world. It is run by the Emir and is home to around 350,000 Qataris, as well as more than 2 million migrant workers who play a vital part in the economy. On the downside, political parties are not allowed. The vast majority of workers cannot join trade unions. Women face discrimination and homosexuality is criminalized. In 2010, FIFA awarded Qatar the right to host the 2022 World Cup, a decision that was widely criticized. What's gone wrong in the run-up to the World Cup and who is responsible? Our researchers have spent the last decade investigating. I have been working with Amnesty for the past 10 years, researching and documenting human rights violations in the Gulf region. I travel to Qatar to meet migrant workers there in the country, meet officials, but also travel to sending countries to meet migrant workers in their home countries and hear about their stories and experience working in Qatar. Qatar! As a person coming from the Middle East, I was genuinely so happy when Qatar uh, was awarded this right to host this World Cup. Basically, it meant for once I felt our region will be associated with a mega sporting event, being able to celebrate the Middle East, the culture that we have, and not being necessarily associated with wars and terrorism and violation. The World Cup offered a welcome opportunity to show off the country's best features. But concerns over Qatar's human rights record persisted. And when corruption scandals rocked the heart of world football, FIFA elected a new president, Gianni Infantino with a promise to put the FIFA house in order. Of course the World Cup will take place in Qatar in 2022. And so the ball rolled on. Seven stadiums, hotels, an airport, and a new city had to be built. Apart from a lot of money, you also need a lot of people to make this a reality. And this is where the suffering for many of these workers began. Qatar brought in hundreds of thousands of extra migrant workers, mainly from Asia and Africa, to do the hard labor. Migrant workers are governed by the so-called kafala system in Qatar. They must have a kofil, or sponsor, to enter the country and to work. At any point and for any reason, the sponsor may withdraw a worker's sponsorship, leaving them undocumented and at risk of arrest. So in a nutshell, these elements of the kafala system create this power imbalance between workers and employers and are usually used by unscrupulous employers to abuse and exploit migrant workers. So what are the issues that migrant workers face? Obviously, we just have to caveat all this by saying not all migrant workers in Qatar face labor abuses and exploitation, but the system in place in the country allows for these abuses to happen and facilitate these abuses. And the problem starts usually in the sending countries where migrant workers tend to pay high recruitment fees to secure these jobs in Qatar and the Gulf. So they come to the country already in debt. And once they arrive in the country, many also are deceived into their labor conditions or working and working conditions. So they were promised jobs that are different than what they will find in Qatar, uh, be it at the pay level or the conditions that they will be living in. Others also have issues of uh, unpaid salaries or late or non-payment of wages, which we refer to as wage theft. Lots of them working in long hours in very difficult working conditions. We know the climate in Qatar and the Gulf, the heat and humidity that can cause also some health issues for them, especially those working in constructions. They work what we call live in labor camps. 
Uh, so it's usually kind of uh, small rooms where they share amongst eight or ten people, sleeping on bunk beds, sometimes in unsanitary conditions. Our latest report look at the issue of the deaths of migrant workers in Qatar. We have seen a high number of relatively young and healthy migrant workers who are dying for unknown reason, often referred to as natural deaths or cardiac arrest, without any underlying health condition. Sadly, the case of Sujan is not unique, and we have seen uh, other cases of families of migrant workers who are suffering as a result of the death of their loved ones in Qatar. Qatar will have the duty to remedy the families of the deceased uh, families back home if uh, the investigation found that the death is actually related to their working condition. Any death is a tragedy, whether it's one, whether it's a thousand, whether it's two, and that is unacceptable. And our goal and the steps that we've taken and the steps that uh, you know, the, uh, Qatar in general is taking is to make sure that that number reaches a zero. It took some time, but eventually Qatar listened to some of the criticism. In 2017, it started to introduce important reforms. Migrant workers can now leave the country and change jobs without permission of their employer. Qatar also facilitated workers' access to justice and introduced a compulsory minimum wage. The reforms that have been introduced were good on paper, but in practice they remain weakly enforced and implemented, meaning that when you hear the stories of migrant workers, you can tell that they are still struggling and many are still facing abuse. For instance, uh, despite the fact that now migrant workers are allowed to move jobs without the permission of their employer, there are certain loopholes still in the system that means that many are not able to move jobs. For the cases of unpaid salaries, we have uh, spoken to many hundreds of migrant workers who've been waiting for months to get their case settled in court. And at the end of the day, they ended up with a piece of paper without receiving any of their wages or their dues. It's clear that Qatar has a responsibility here. But what about FIFA? After all, it is also organizing this tournament, and it will make billions of dollars from it. FIFA has its own human rights policy, and it must act in line with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. That means that FIFA must ensure that any championship it organizes does not negatively impact human rights. Has FIFA actually done that? FIFA has listened, and FIFA is changing. FIFA will include provisions in its statutes to respect and promote human rights in all of its activities, from the organization of the FIFA World Cup to football development projects and commercial partnerships. In May 2017, FIFA introduced its human rights policy, meaning that now it has committed to have responsibility to respect the human rights. And also, it has introduced bidding criteria for all potential hosting countries to meet certain criteria if they want to host the World Cup or, uh, or major football events. Uh, however, the implementation of these policies is a bit questionable, knowing that FIFA was considering to expand this World Cup to Saudi Arabia, or the fact that it awarded the FIFA Club World Cup to China. It's clear what FIFA must do. It must ensure that human rights are respected in the context of the World Cup and pressure Qatar to make sure the labor reforms really improve the lives of all workers. This applies not only to the people building the stadiums, but also to the many thousands of waiters and waitresses, hotel staff, taxi drivers, cleaners, and security guards, without whom the teams and their fans could not enjoy the World Cup. If FIFA does its own human rights checks in the selection process of all future championships, abuses like those in Qatar could be prevented. I really want this to be an opportunity for change, and I am hopeful that Qatar has come a long way, but it needs to continue carrying on the reforms process that it started. It needs to give it meaning, it needs to implement it and enforce it properly so that Qatar will be a better place for migrant workers. However, the clock is ticking. We don't have much time. Pressure on Qatar and FIFA is increasing. The spotlight on this World Cup has brought important changes to Qatar's labor system. Still, 
Much more needs to be done. If we all step up the pressure, we can push Qatar to improve the lives of migrant workers, not just for the World Cup, but after this event is over too. There's a lot more to be gained in Qatar than just winning the trophy.